Welcome to Pop Style Review. We're so excited for our new guest. We are here with the nightlife impresario, Kayvon Zan. Thank you. I'm so excited to be here. Tell us a little bit about your beginnings. When I first came to New York, I was actually coming from Europe because I had this crazy idea that I was going to do this whole male modeling thing, which did not go well, clearly. Look at me now. I'm originally from North Carolina. And like I said, I'm a Persian redneck. My parents were born in Iran. So I grew up in this really small Southern town, which titles itself the Hollywood of the South. Like, can you really take that seriously? But- Never heard that. Yeah. I haven't either. Okay. Wilmington, North Carolina. <laughs> it's where they filmed Dawson's Creek, One Tree Hill, all these really cheesy, like, you know, teeny bopper shows. Oh. So I grew up like around all of this, but in this really Persian home. So I'd go to school like with all these like regular like Americana cool surfer dude types and then I'd go home to like Tarantulas where it's like, you know, it's like <laughs> ethnic food, my mom's driving me crazy, like you know, that type of thing. I wanted to go somewhere that was progressive, you know, and I thought why not New York? So when I came here, I was with an agency and I didn't do well. Like I thought, well, maybe Europe wasn't the place for me, well, New York wasn't the place for me either. So I really was kind of at a place in my life where I wanted to find myself. So I started finding these parties that Kenny Kenny was throwing and like you mentioned Suzanne Barsh. And I saw this ad for like, oh, come to this party, like all types of people, drag queens, like just really, really like appealing to me at the time. So I went and I was like horrified. Because I, you know, I wasn't this. I was just like this, like kid, like just trying to look like everybody else. But there was something really, like, feeding my soul, being around all these people who were so like effortlessly themselves and non-apologetic. And I was like, okay, this is like where what I want to be around, like authenticity, like people who have something to say. And I always say, um, nightlife for me was what university is for most people. I was able to find myself, find out what I was good at, and really experiment. You know, I experimented with my fashion styles, I experimented with my sexuality, I experimented with every facet of who I am. Do you want to tell us a little bit about what you're doing with the box and how that's evolved? The box is honestly like, it's, it's like a home from home for me. It was my first hosting gig at a nightclub, and for those of your viewers who aren't aware of what hosting means, I mean, Basically, you get paid to show up and be fabulous and to cause a scene and bring everyone there. And it's, it started out kind of as a joke because I'm like, is this real life? But now it's, it's a business, you know? And there's a rate and there's a way things go. And the box believed in me. I mean, they really, they, they were one of the few people outside of Suzanne when I started who really saw the value of what I was doing. And they didn't care. Like, you know, I could do whatever I wanted to do and bring whoever I wanted to bring. and. I was like, okay, if I'm at a nightclub, any drag queen or any gothy person or any like, f you know, fabulous freak or queer person is going to be treated like a VIP. Mm -hmm. So when I did, I did the last year of Webster Hall before they revamped now, mm -hmm. and they gave me a Saturday night, and I said I want a VIP door for all my queer and drag queen friends and alternative friends. They're going to be pulled to the front of the line. I'm like, if I'm at this establishment, you, if your bouncer sees them, they're pulled to the front of the line. So I used nightlife as a way to do a reverse world where the people that I felt like were being pushed to the side every day were actually being treated like they were the VIPs and the all-stars. And that, wow. was, that was exciting. What, what do we have to look forward to? What are you doing next? Well, you know, this past couple of years has really been about me finding like the essence of why I do the things that I do and being able to really give that power, not so much with me being the product. And with that said, I started a talent agency a couple years ago, because from nightlife, you know, shows like Gotham and different magazines were reaching out to me saying, hey, we'd love for people that we see like in your photos and stuff or your Instagram to be on the show. Like, how do we find that type of talent? So I started an agency called Zan Wagon a couple years ago, and I started promoting talent who was unique that you wouldn't find at other agencies. And mm -hmm. from there, my talent has been featured in the T-Mobile campaigns. Today, we were optioned for Mark Jacobs' campaign. You know, they've been in all the magazines and on different shows, you know, like Euphoria and things like this on HBO. And 
It's been great because I feel like, like for me, I had that experience, but I feel like I could have done so much more if I had an agency or someone kind of help me. Mm -hmm. and, you know, because when you speak for yourself, it's not the same as when someone's representing you. Thank you for sharing your stories with yeah, us um, and with our viewers. And we'll see you at the next event or party or wherever you invite us to. <laughs> with the blue walls. Yes, with the blue walls.